Hello, everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank the editors in chief of High Power Laser and Science in Engineering that have selected our paper for the 2022 prize. So in my talk, I will summarize the results of uh, this paper in the, in the context of the research activities that I'm carrying with my group at Commissariat à l'énergie atomique, so CEA in France. So these research activities aim at designing Doppler boosted light sources that are capable of producing extreme light intensities at which strong field quantum electrodynamics, so strong field QED processes, will dominate light matter or even light quantum vacuum interactions. So before going uh, into the details, I would like to briefly introduce my team at CEA. So before joining the physics at high intensity group in 2017, so the group was exclusively focused on experiments mainly performed on the 100 terawatt UHI 100 laser by uh, the team of Fabien Kerry, who is also a co-author of this paper for which uh, we have been selected this year. So in early 2018, I started a new theory and simulation activity in the group, thanks to local CA fundings, national and European fundings, as well as very large DOE computing hours allocation that are regularly obtained in collaboration with the group of Jean-Luc Vey at Berkeley Lab. So right now, my theory and simulation team uh, includes uh, senior scientists, as well as uh, two postdocs, two PhD students, and one master of science student. So here is the outline of my talk. So in the following, I will first give a little bit of context uh, on this paper, on the papers that got selected. And I will then present in parts two and three the numerical and physical ch challenges that were recently addressed with my team as part of this paper. Finally, I will uh, conclude my talk. So let's start with the context. So the context of uh, our paper is a high field science that was born with the advent of high power short pulse amplification laser technology by Gérard Mourou and Donna Strickland, who were recently awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2018. So this high power laser can deliver light pulses of uh, several petawatts in peak power over extremely short durations, uh, over 20 femtoseconds typically. So once focused over micron sizes, uh, uh, focal spot uh, sizes, intensities of 10 to the 23 watt per square centimeters can be achieved that are associated to extreme conditions, such as, for instance, 10 million photons in the volume of uh, an atom that can be encountered at every moment. That corresponds to extreme uh, electric field amplitudes of 300 teravolt per meter that are capable of accelerating electrons for their rest position up to the velocities close to the speed of light in less than a nanosecond. So why uh, studying high field science is important? So the first interest is mainly fundamental as the light matter uh, interaction can uh, produce uh, extreme plasma states that are ultra relativistic out of equilibrium and where uh, highly nonlinear effects are the norm. So such plasma conditions can only be found in uh, uh, astrophysical objects, compact astrophysical objects. And so reproducing them in the lab represents uh, an immense fundamental interest. So the second interest uh, of high field science is that the light matter interaction can produce secondary sources of uh, particles and light that have uh, remarkable properties. So these sources can indeed uh, be ultra compact. So nowadays we can produce relativistic electron beams close to GV, so above GV energy up to AGV over centimeter square. And uh, these sources also have the properties of being uh, ultra short, so down to tens of attoseconds which gives the opportunity to probe uh, ultra-fast phenomena in matter, such as the electron dynamics in atoms, for instance. So nowadays, the most intense uh, lasers, petawatt lasers, can reach uh, up to 10 petawatt peak power, which opens up new perspectives for high field science. So in particular, a major interrogation of the high field science community is to uh, find a, a fundament uh, fundamental uh, problem to address with this laser. So what uh, fundamental challenge, for what fundamental question in physics can be addressed with these high power lasers. So one interesting line of research that I have pursued in my team in the past five years is to, is to find ways to probe uh, what we call strong field QED, as I uh, mentioned in, uh, in introduction. And this strong field QED has barely been explored so far in experiment and starts to uh, manifest when the laser electric field amplitudes start to reach uh, intense, uh, electric field amplitudes, intensities at which the vacuum itself can become uh, nonlinear. 
So perhaps the most emblematic strong field QED process is the so-called optical breakdown of the quantum maculums that occurs close to the Schwinger limit of 10 to the 29 watt per square centimeters, and we, which is associated to prolific electron uh, positron pair production uh, in vacuum. So how is this possible? So according to quantum physics, electron positron pairs can spontaneously appear and disappear in vacuum on a time scale given by the uncertainty principle here. So for an energy difference delta E equal to the rest mass of a pair, this time interval delta T corresponds roughly to a zeta second. So 10 to the minus 21 seconds, this is very short. But if, if one could apply an electric field large enough during this time uh, interval delta T, one could imagine materialize these virtual pairs in vacuum. So a natural question that arises is what is the required field amplitude for this? So while well, this is very simple, so the work of the electric field required during the uh, time interval delta T must be larger than the rest uh, mass energy of the pair, which gives, an after simple calculation, an electric field uh, amplitude of uh, roughly 10 to the 18 volt per meter. So this is a so-called Schwinger field. So for a, a laser field, this would correspond to an intensity of 10 to the 29 watt per square centimeter. So this is huge. This is six orders of magnitudes higher so, uh, than the intensities that uh, are achieved, the maximum intensities achieved by a, a multi-petawatt laser. So this Schwinger limit represents the limit at, at which uh, strong field QED processes start to manifest in the quantum vacuum. But as I will show you now, such effects can uh, actually manifest at much lower intensities, so around 10 to the 23, uh, 10 to the 24 watt per square centimeters when light starts, to, uh, when light interacts with matter. So, so far, also the present record in light intensities, as I said before, is close to 10 to the 23 watt per square centimeter. Light matter interaction experiments have mainly been explored at, at intensities below a few 10 to the 21 watt per square centimeter, uh, at which so the light matter interaction can be well described employing classical electrodynamics. So when interacting with matter at uh, higher intensities, so, so strong field QED processes start arising when the laser electric field, so E, seen by electrons in their rest frame, approaches the Schwinger field of 10 to the 20, uh, 10 to the 18 volt per meter, sorry. Or equivalently, as I define here, if the chi parameter defined as the ratio of the laser field of the, in the, the particle rest frame over the Schwinger field uh, becomes close to, close to unity. So the first of these strong field QED processes is called photon recall or multi-photon Compton scattering and starts uh, to manifest at chi at uh, close to 0.1, corresponding to laser intensities of 10 to the 22 watt per square centimeter. So this effect is associated to an abrupt change in energy and momentum of an accelerated electron in a strong field through the emission of a gamma photon. So above 10 to the 24 watt per square centimeters, gamma photons can decay to an electron positron pair in the strong field, in the laser, laser field through a process called nonlinear bright wheeler production. So above this intensity, each electron positron uh, can, pair can produce gamma photons by photon recalls that in turn decay into other pairs and so on and so forth. And this results in uh, what we call a QED cascade associated to prolific electron positron pair production and that can lead to uh, extreme plasma, plasma states where collective effects uh, play a major role and that are governed by strong field QED processing. So finally, at intensities close to 10 to the 29 watt per square centimeter, so vacuum breakdown can occur, potentially leading to even more extreme QED plasma condition. So, why reaching such light intensities uh, is important. So why observing, uh, so probing strong field QED uh, is important. So first of all, it could allow, uh, uh, so uh, probing the strong field QED in regimes that are still terra incognita from an experimental point of view. So although the underlying theory is supposedly known, the complexity of collective effects that occur in this regime is uh, totally unexplored. So furthermore, the production of high fields could also uncover physics beyond the standard model, such, such as the presence of actions or milli charged particles. So in this regard, high fields would allow testing the presence of milli charged particles in charged mass space, still not constrained by astrophysical bounds. So in such, if such uh, milli charged particles would exist, 
in this still supposedly still unconstrained space, they could also lead to vacuum breakdown and QED cascades below the Schwinger field. So such QED plasmas of milli charged particles could lead to measurable signatures in experiments. For instance, an, an abnormal laser absorption at a lower than expected intensity. So the QED plasma produced uh, close or above the Schwinger limit are also pervasive in astrophysics where they are expected to play a, a leading role, a crucial, a crucial role in the electromagnetic signatures of compact astrophysical objects. So for such signatures, for instance, it include uh, fast radio bursts coming from uh, magnetars or gamma ray bursts. So the understanding of the basic physics of QED plasmas produced close or above the Schwinger field is still, is still at an early stage and is extremely challenging in silico, as, I will, uh, as we will see later. So what is uh, the main limitation to observe strong field QED dominated regime? So as I said before, the present record in light intensity is set to 10 to the 23 watt per square centimeter. So this has been done uh, using a four petawatt class laser at the Corel's laser facility in South Korea. So this is two orders of magnitude below the required 10 to the 25 watt per square centimeters at which uh, 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 we start observing QED plasma effects or collective effects and a lot of the, the, the production of uh, prolific electron positron pair evolution by strong field QED processes. And this is also well below, uh, so six orders of magnitude below the required 10 to the 29 watt per square centimeters at which uh, we would observe the, the so-called uh, optical breakdown of the quantum vacuum. So obviously, going uh, to the strong field QED realm, we require a, a, a paradigm shift that, we, that uh, we have tried to address in my team over the last uh, five years. So the, the current paradigm that has, uh, that has drawn a, a lot of interest uh, in the community is to collide a relativistic electron beam here with a source of high field amplitude E. This, so this uh, source could be the Coulomb field of uh, aligned crystals, for instance, or the electromagnetic field of uh, uh, an intense laser. So the idea behind this scheme is that in the rest frame of the electron beam, the laser field and associated chi parameter uh, is increased by the Lorentz factor gamma of the electron beam. So for large enough gamma and high enough laser intensities, the laser field in the electron rest frame could exclude the Schwinger field and trigger strong field QED processing. So the first laser-based experiments implementing this scheme and perform at SLAC in the 1990s have already reached a quantum parameter chi of 0.3. So new experiments planned at facet two or at the European XFL as part of the LUXI initiative aim at, slightly, uh, uh, at chi's uh, parameter slightly exceeding one. So these electron laser collisions are obviously a promising path to achieve precision measurements of strong field QED cross sections. However, the planned experiments won't allow accessing chi parameters much larger than unity as required to observe extreme QED pair plasma states governed by collective effects. In addition, as, as they rely on the initial presence of fermions, they cannot, this scheme cannot be used to probe quantum vacuum effects. So these experiments are also cha cha very challenging uh, uh, from an experimental point of view as they require the synchronization in time and space of a relativistic uh, electron beam and a high power laser beam over femtosecond uh, temporal scale and micron scale uh, special scale. So in this context, an alternative uh, and complementary path uh, that uh, we uh, discuss in our paper is to divide a multipurpose light source of extreme intensity that is orders of magnitudes more intense that present, uh, present their high power lasers. So how could we achieve this? Well, we think that uh, this could be achieved uh, using a, a rather old but simple concept that we uh, call the curved relativistic mi mirror concept and that I briefly introduced here. So in this concept, so high power lasers that sketch in red here is reflected over uh, uh, what we assume a perfectly reflective and aberration free uh, curved mirror, so parabolic uh, parabolic shaped mirror that goes at a speed close to the speed of light with, so with a Lorentz gamma factor uh, much larger than unity. And so over the reflection of the incident laser over such a mirror, two physical uh, effects will occur and will lead to an intensification of the reflected light. So the first of this effect is a, 
uh, temporal compression by Doppler effects that lead to a first intensification. And the second effect is uh, an intensification by special focusing of the reflected light to much tighter focus points that is, would be possible with the incident light. And the reason for this is that due to the Doppler upshift of the reflected light, so the wavelength of the reflected light is smaller, which makes it possible to focus it at smaller focus spots than the incident light. And so if you do a simple, uh, simple calculation, you can show that is assuming a perfectly reflective mirror. So the total intensification resulting from these two effects scale as gamma to the six, where gamma is a Lorentz factor of the mirror. So with a petawatt class laser, delivering intensities close to 10 to the 22 watt per square centimeters and a moderate Lorentz factor of gamma of uh, roughly 10, we could in principle uh, reach the Schwinger limit uh, using this uh, concept. So obviously, the, the, the major hurdle with this concept has been to find a realistic implementation of such a mirror in experiment. So how producing a relativistic mirror, which is uh, perfectly reflective in experiment and with no aberration. So this has been the main challenge. And in, uh, at, in my group, we think that this can be done using uh, uh, what we call uh, relativistic plasma mirrors. So remarkable physical systems called relativistic plasma mirrors. So what is a plasma mirror? So a plasma mirror can be generated when a high power femtosecond laser with high contrast is focused on an initially solid target as I sketch here. So at laser focus, the laser field is so intense that it quasi instantly ionizes matter and generates a dense plasma, which is reflecting reflective for the incident light. So owing to the high contrast and very short laser pulse duration, this plasma barely expands in vacuum as a sketch here during the interaction and forms a sharp plasma density uh, profile and we, as, uh, with a sharp, uh, what we call density gradient scale length at the plasma vacuum interface, which is much smaller than the incident laser wavelength. And so in this condition, the dense plasma will act as a, a mirror, a so-called plasma mirror, of high optical quality that can specularly reflect the incident light as a sketch here. So upon reflection on this plasma mirror, the laser field uh, uh, can drive periodic oscillation of the plasma mirror surface at relativistic speed, as, as you can see here on the simulation movie showing the temporal evolution of the plasma electron densities uh, in the numerical simulations. So as you can see, you can see here in the simulation movie, so uh, the periodic oscillation of the uh, plasma surface driven by the incident laser field. So this relativistic oscillating mirror will in turn periodically distort the reflected field by Doppler effect as I sketched here. And this periodic distortion is associated to a high harmonic spectrum in the frequency domain or a train of photosecond pulses in the time domain once we remove the fundamental frequency. And so such uh, high harmon uh, Doppler harmonic spectrum have been uh, thoroughly observed and controlled in experiments. So this is not science fiction. So we know how to generate and control these uh, uh, plasma mirrors in experiments. And so I show you how to generate a relativistic uh, mirror. So this is not a, a relativistic mirror moving at a constant speed. So it is oscillating in time, but it's still a relativistic mirror. But how to curve its surface, so how to generate a curved relativistic mirror. So as you can see again on the simulation movie, you can see that the surface of this of the plasma mirror is actually curved, naturally curved. And this natural curvature comes from the inhomogeneous red laser radiation pressure at focus, so the laser intensity being higher at the center of the laser focus spot than on the edges. And so the this spatially varying uh, radiation pressure leads to a natural curvature of the uh, plasma mirror surface. And as you can see on this second simulation movie, displaying the reflected field uh, amplitude after reflection of the laser from the plasma mirror surface. And so you can see that this uh, natural curvature can actually tightly focus the reflected field. And so this, uh, this has been done for a multi petawatt laser, so a two petawatt laser. And you can see that at the focus of the curved plasma mirror, you can reach intensities uh, close to 10 to so exceeding 10 to the 25 watt per square centimeters. This looks very promising. 
So this focusing effect has been actually first reported by uh, Nomova and collaborators. Although at that time, they reported only a factor of five uh, intensity gain. And as I will show you later, this is due to the uh, uh, numerical errors induced by the standard uh, simulation tools that was used at that time. So this effect was later observed in experiment uh, in the physics at high intensity group at CEA with the 100 terawatt UHI 100 laser. And in particular, during my PhD, uh, we proposed with Fabien uh, to control this curvature by, by tuning the uh, plasma gradient scale length at the plasma vacuum interface. And this has been validated experimentally. So we demonstrated that by increasing the gradient scale length, we could actually increase the curvature of the uh, plasma mirror surface that in turn leads to an increase in the uh, Doppler harmonic divergence. So this was an indirect measurement uh, through the Doppler harmonic divergence. So at first, this effect, so for a long time, this effect has this curvature effect, natural curvature effect has been considered as highly detrimental as it increases uh, the divergence of uh, the Doppler harmonic beam, which makes uh, then difficult to exploit this beam in secondary uh, experiments. So instead, we, with my team, we recently consider using these effects to uh, reach extreme light intensities, which leads us to the following uh, question. So what are the maximum intensities that one can attain as a focus of a, plasma, a relativistic plasma mirror that would be curved by radiation pressure? And actually, so this leads me to the second part of my talk, which uh, will uh, briefly talks about the uh, exascale and accuracy challenges. Actually, answering this question has to be done using uh, very challenging first principles of 3D particle uh, kinetic in cell simulation. So he, on this slide, I uh, briefly introduce uh, the, uh, so how such code works. So in, a, in this code, so electromagnetic fields and sources are discretized on a mesh that I sketch here. And plasma particles, so electrons, uh, ions, can uh, freely move through, throughout this mesh. So plasma particles in our, uh, orange here. So and at each time step, so a particle in cell code, a peak code, uh, first computes the current and uh, uh, charge uh, sources on the, the, on the grid mesh. So this is called the current charge deposition step. Once we know the electromagnetic sources on the mesh, we can solve Maxwell's equation on, on the mesh. So this is called the Maxwell solver step. This is a very important step. And so with the Maxwell solver, we can advance the electromagnetic fields at the net time step. And then we interpolate back the electromagnetic fields at the next time step on particle positions. This is called field gathering. And we then, we then advance uh, uh, particle position using a relativistic motion equation. So, so far, uh, plasma mirror focusing simulation were not tractable in 3D with a standard simulation tool. And uh, in, in order to do so, we had to address uh, two important challenges. So the first challenge is uh, an increase in accuracy because the standard uh, finite difference uh, Maxwell servers that was used that were used so far can induce uh, a strong artificial numerical dispersion of electromagnetic waves that can uh, strongly affect the propagation of Doppler harmonics uh, in vacuum, the generation and propagation of Doppler harmonics uh, from the plasma mirror. So to overcome this uh, barrier, we developed uh, a massively uh, parallel dispersion-free pseudo-spectral solvers that uh, are totally dispersion-free and uh, solve this accuracy problem. So the second challenge, challenge has been to port the, peak, the particle in cell algorithm, so our, co our peak codes, to uh, the next generation of exascale computers because the uh, most challenging uh, plasma mirror simulation in 3D can require up to trillion cells and trillion particles. We obviously need the uh, largest machine available uh, worldwide. So in order to uh, uh, perform efficiently on this machine, we develop uh, novel parallelization strategies that I won't present here, but uh, that I will uh, just uh, briefly detail in my next slide. So in particular, all the optimization, so the pseudo-spectral solvers and the uh, optimization on exascale architectures have been first tested in the Pixar uh, particle in cell uh, library that we co-developed between CA and Berkeley Lab. And these uh, new developments have been uh, uh, implemented in the production uh, code, uh, Warpex, that we uh, strongly co-develop uh, with uh, the team of Jean-Luc Vey at Berkeley Lab. So in particular, we have now five contributors in my team to this code. 
And so thanks to all this optimization, uh, we had access to the largest machine worldwide and to a very large computing hours allocation. Thanks to which we finally could answer the questions that I presented before. And so which brings me to the first third part of my talk. So just to remind you the question, so what are the maximum intensities that one can attain at the, at the focus of a curved plasma mirror by radiation pressure? And so to answer this question, we use the code WAPEX on the MIRA clusters, so on the full MIRA cluster. So uh, we use a million cores on, uh, during 20 hours. So this simulation uh, uh, required uh, 20 million CPU hours. So here I sketch the simulation setup. So in this simulation, so we impinge a high power laser in, in red on a, a, a plasma mirror. So this plasma mirror gets curved by radiation pressure and uh, focus the reflected uh, Doppler harmonic beams uh, uh, in front of the plasma mirror as I sketch here. So here are the simulation results. So in the plane of generation, so here, uh, where the harm Doppler harmonics are produced, so the panel, panel C shows you the uh, spatial temporal profile of the reflected light. So you can see uh, two interesting features. So the first one is a, a strong curvature of the reflected field wave front. So which, uh, which means that the curved, naturally curved plasma mirror actually tightly focuses uh, the reflected light. And the second effect is the temporal compression of the uh, reflected light. So this is uh, this is a representation over one optical incident optical laser cycle. So you can see that the reflected light is uh, compressed down uh, much uh, smaller to the, compared to the incident optical laser cycle. So panel D. Uh, uh, shows you the, uh, the special profile of the reflected beam obtained from uh, the 3D simulation. So panel, panels E and F show you the same quantities, but now uh, at plasma mirror focus, so where the Doppler harmonics uh, get focused, and you can see that the harmonic beam, so on the special profile of the harmonic beam, so the harmonic beam is uh, very tightly focused and with no apparent optical, uh, major optical aberration. So now if you look at the evolution of the intensity of the reflected field in front of the plasma mirror, you can see that uh, the combination of temporal compression and spatial compression can lead to intensities close to the, ten, so uh, approaching 10 to the 25 watt per square centimeter. So this simulation was done with an intensity, initial intensity of 10 to the 22 watt per square centimeter. So for the incident laser light. So a nice feature of this scheme is that uh, due to the high harmonic uh, efficiency achieved in this condition, only fairly harmonic orders are required to reach uh, the, the, the demonstrated light intensity that plasma mirror focus. So this makes this scheme very robust to potential, uh, potential laser and plasma imperfections that are actually unavoidable in experiments. So as I told you uh, earlier, the plasma mirror curvature can be increased uh, by augmenting the gradient scale length of the plasma mirror uh, surface. So the natural question that comes is, can we go higher than uh, three orders of magnitude uh, intensity gain? So above 10 to 25 watt per square centimeters. So unfortunately, the answer is no. And to answer this question, we perform the parameter scans of 2D simulation as a function of uh, gradient scale length here. Uh, expressed in uh, uh, units of uh, uh, incident laser wavelength, and also laser uh, the normalized laser amplitude uh, on the target. So the results on, uh, displayed on this color map show the total intensity gains that we obtain at plasma mirror focus, so as a function of these two parameters. So what can see is that uh, at high laser amplitude, as uh, was used in uh, uh, the previous uh, 3D simulation, this intensity gain uh, mainly varies with the gradient scale length, L. So as shown, as you can see here on the, the line out here on the right. So when L increases, the intensity gain increases at first due to the increase of plasma mirror curvature, as I, as I mentioned before, increasing the uh, gradient scale length allows us to increase the plasma mirror curvature. So however, you can see that at large uh, gradients, this gain drops due to the fact that the, actually the plasma does not act as a plasma mirror anymore. So the harmonic efficiency drop and the special uh, reflected field profiles get degraded by nonlinear effect occurring in the in the, in the underdense part of the gradient, for instance, such as filamentation or uh, uh, stochasticity. So there is an optimal gradient scale length 
that lead to an optimum, uh, an optimum that maximizes uh, the intensity gain and plasma mu focus. And this optimum gradient scale length is uh, uh, roughly around lambda over 10, so a tenth of uh, incident laser wavelength. So for this reason, actually, the maximum intensity achievable with radiation pressure is uh, limited to 10 to the 26 watt per cent square centimeter with a 10 petawatt laser. So as I displayed here on this uh, on the black curve, so this black curve shows you the uh, intensity one can achieve at the, uh, the focus of uh, plasma mirror curved by radiation pressure as a function of the incident uh, laser power here. So for a 10 petawatt laser, we can achieve we can exceed 10 to the 26 watt per square centimeter at plasma mirror focus. This is already huge, but how can we reach uh, the Schwinger limit? So actually on the red curve here, you can see uh, the intensity one could achieve at the focus of a plasma mirror if we could focus the Doppler harmonics down to their diffraction limit. And you can see that with a 10 peta in this condition, so this is very challenging, but if one uh, would achieve this, we could reach uh, intensities close to the Schwinger limit. So right now we are we have uh, very promising ways. Uh, we have found very promising ways to reach uh, the Schwinger limit and to further curve the, the radiation pressure beyond the, so the, the plasma mirror curvature, sorry, beyond radiation pressure. But in the following, uh, so I won't focus on this technique, but I will instead focus on uh, uh, another important challenge that will naturally arise uh, in experiments employing curved plasma mirrors. So how to find uh, signatures of the extreme intensities achieved at uh, plasma mirror focus. So a first solution uh, that we have been investigating in the physics at high intensity group uh, would be to uh, directly measure the full spatial temporal profile of the reflected field from the plasma mirror, thanks to which we could then obtain the intensity reach in, at an arbitrary plane from the plasma mirror surface and in particular at plasma mirror focus. So to achieve this measurement, uh, we developed in the physics at NCC group with Fabien Quere a new dynamical tachography technique, which uses two non-collinear uh, laser pulses at frequencies omega and uh, two omega, where omega is a, a, a fundamental laser frequency. And uh, this combination of frequencies is used to induce a time-varying tachographic object. So this method was successfully applied in the 100 terawatt regime on the 100 terawatt UHI 100 laser at CEA. Uh, thanks to which, thanks to this uh, measurement technique, we could measure the full spatial temporal profile of the, uh, the reflected light from a, a plasma mirror curved by laser radiation pressure. And this is displayed on the, on the left curve here, the left figure here. And this first study notably demonstrated that the temporal and spatial compression uh, induced by the curved, uh, uh, curved relativistic plasma mirror, uh, naturally curved by radiation pressure, is uh, well in line with theoretical pre prediction. And uh, in particular, the, the uh, optical quality of the focusing is excellent as, as predicted in simulation. So obviously, the next step will be to scale uh, this first measurement done in the 100 terawatt regime to the petawatt regime. Too. So the next mi milestone will be to apply this dynamical psychography technique with petawatt lasers. So a second solution uh, to uh, diagnose the intensity of the uh, plasma mirror focus would be to actually uh, uh, harness the Doppler boosted beam and uh, foc uh, focus it on a, uh, on a secondary matter sample to produce clearly, clearly observable strong field QEDX signatures, such as high energy particles or radiation. So with a radiation uh, pressure focusing, this could be achieved, for instance, by placing uh, a secondary uh, uh, L, so called L shaped target at plasma mirror focus, such as sketch here. So the principle is as follows. So uh, this is a result of a 3D simulation done with Warpex. So here in color scale, you have uh, the incident uh, high power laser that is uh, directed onto a first, onto a, the, lower, the, lo the lower arm of the L-shaped target. So at uh, laser focus and on the lower arm of this target, we produce a relativistic plasma mirror curved by radiation pressure. And this curved mirror in turn focusing, focuses the reflected light and the Doppler harmonic uh, content on, onto the upper arm of the uh, L-shaped target. 
And at uh, uh, the plasma mirror focus, we can achieve, as I uh, show you before, intensities in excess of 10 to the 25 watt per square centimeter, which gives rise to uh, uh, strong field QED processes. So, and in particular, the production of uh, gamma photon by multi-photon Compton scattering and the production of uh, uh, electron positron pair by the decay of a gamma photon in a strong field through the nonlinear bright wheeler processes that I uh, introduced uh, you earlier. So particularly in cell simulations, and we, we were picked, shows that this setup, so the, this l sharp target, could allow observing clear strong field QED signatures such as uh, prolific pair production, for instance. So according to our simulations, the maximum chi parameter can reach 30. So this is much larger than all the foreseen experiments with uh, electron uh, laser collisions. And so in this case, the total uh, positron charge can uh, be as large as uh, uh, 0.16 nanocoulomb for a 10 petawatt laser, initial uh, 10 petawatt initial laser power, sorry. And the positron energies uh, can uh, be as large as 3.4 GV, uh, above uh, 3.4 GV, so this is a huge energy, and uh, we can, uh, with 50 picocoulomb charge at 3.4 GV, so as a comparison for a standard uh, 10 petawatt laser uh, tightly focused on the solid target, so without uh, Doppler boosting uh, with a, a plasma mirror, the total positron pair produced uh, would only reach 160 femtocoulomb and the maximum positron energy uh, of 600 MeV with less than 8 femtocoulomb above 500 MeV energy. So what we show uh, uh, also show in our simulation is that the signal to nose ratio uh, of the produced strong field QD processes is orders of magnitude higher with Doppler boosted beam uh, 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 than with standard beams. So this is uh, uh, just to show you that such L-shaped targets are within a reach of uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, microfabrication technique. So such targets have been uh, engineered for us from uh, um, uh, 3D printing techniques developed at uh, uh, TUV, TUVIN by uh, colleagues and that printed uh, these targets uh, for us, as you can see here, on a microscope, microscope view of uh, such a target. So now to, I would like to conclude my talk. So I would like to bring uh, to your attention two important messages. So the first message is that uh, theory and simulations show the very high prospect of plasma mirrors as intensity boosters for, for current high power uh, uh, petawatt lasers. So Doppler boosted uh, lasers, uh, thanks to uh, relativistic plasma mirror boosters, can offer a, a very promising route to uh, achieve much larger intensities than uh, present uh, light, uh, light sources, and uh, would allow approaching the Schringer limit, uh, potentially with petawatt class laser. And the second message is that these Doppler boosted, boosted lasers can uh, considerably increase uh, strong field QED, the observable strong field QED signatures compared to standard laser. And this uh, offers the opportunity to uh, uh, probe and test strong field QED in uh, yet uncharted regimes. So thank you. thanks a lot for your attention.